Damn, I'm looking good. What's up everyone? Yes, your eyes are not deceiving. Today I'm going to remake one of my older reviews and it's none other than Poor Challenge. Now, you might be thinking, wait, are you going to review that game again? Well, first off, my audio quality was absolute dog shit in that video. I mean, it's so damn bad. The longer version has more corners thrown at you, so not much needs to be said. The Japan track has some curvy corners and some 90 degree corners. It's not that hard, but be careful, the longer version has more cur- That is absolute dog shit. Secondly, I felt like my old review was pretty rushed and it could have been so much better. And this time around, I'm gonna remake my old video similar to how Capcom remakes the older Resident Evil games for the modern audience, which is pretty neat. So what is Sport Challenge anyway? Well, it's a PS1 game that was released on April 7, 1997 in the PAL regions and on August 1997 in the US market. I assume that the reason it was released much earlier in Europe than in the US is because I feel like the Porsche brand was much more popular in those regions than in America. In America, as far as I know, only cared about muscle cars like Ford, Dodge and Chevrolet. And they didn't care about the other car makers. As a kid, I remember playing the demo version of this game which was included in the demo disc known as Demo 1. Now, people in America might be thinking, what the fuck is Demo 1 anyway? Well, Demo 1 was a collection of demo discs that were released on the PS1 exclusively in the European market. It had tons of demo versions of many games like Rage Racer, Gran Turismo, Tekken 3, Ape Odyssey and especially Porsche Challenge. Now, keep in mind that Demo 1 wasn't the only brand that offered compilation of demo discs for the consumers. There were other brands like Aero Demo and even the official UK PlayStation magazine had a lot of demo discs throughout the years of the PS1 lifespan. Now, I only got the full version of the game many years after its initial release and I played it nowadays and it was sure was something. So without further ado, let's see if Poor Challenge is a good game or is a dirty stain to the legacy of the Porsche brand? Let's find out in this review. Historically speaking, Porsche has been known for making some of the most iconic cars in the world, most notably the 911 series, the 356 and the 912. However, as successful as Porsche was back in its glory days, in the 90s, it was screwed and it was on the verge of bankruptcy. Chief among the reasons were the US economy and Porsche's dreadful blow to the process. How could they recover, you may ask? Well, simple. They had to make a much more affordable car in order to cut costs as well as expanding the product line. As great as the 911 was, they were not for everyone. Porsche need to make a car that has to appeal for a much, much wider audience. Now, in order to make a car that would appeal to a bigger audience, they still needed to maintain the Porsche's heritage, with its iconic speed, handling and driving experience that the other cars from that car maker had. In 1993, the Detroit Auto Show was on the loose, and it revealed a lot of cars like the Mazda RX-7 on the Prelude and the NXX. The upcoming Porsche car, known as Boxster, was revealed as a concept car and it gathered immense hype to the consumer at the time. The car itself was kinda similar to the Porsche 550 Spider, which was released in 1958. Compared to the other cars of the same brand, the Boxster felt more modernized and it really made sense. Fast forward to 1996, the car was officially released in Europe, with many positive reviews and in my opinion, they were well deserved. For example, Roland Track, which was a company that was involved in the first D4 Speed game back in 1995, said, quote, I love the car's lines and the fact its look is reminiscent of the 550 Spider and the Porsche RSK. They also praised the handling of the car, saying, quote, Pitch this Porsche into a corner and you will discover why proper racing cars have the engine in the middle or at least behind the driver and ahead of the rear axle for balance, optimal grip and the ability to overlook a driver error or two. The Porsche Boxster finally struck gold since it was a Porsche car that was far more affordable than its older brothers. Sure, it was still expensive back then, 
but not as impossible to buy compared to the 911 and the 928. Now, at the same time that the Porsche Boxer was having success, so is the iconic console known as the PlayStation. With the popularity of the console, Porsche needed to find a way to promote their new car and the PlayStation was the right place to promote it, with the help of a development studio known as SSC or Team Soho. This studio was founded in 1994 and their first game was NBA Shootout and Shootout 97, and they were very well received at the time. The team was recruited by Porsche and the car maker allowed the devs to work on a game based on their new car, that was the Boxster. The developers started to make the game in 1995 and they spent time accurately modeled the car as well as the performance, thanks to the power of the PS1. Then the game was released in 1997 for the European market as well as in the US and it gathered average to positive reviews, with people praising the game's graphics, the sound as well as the realistic handling, but some people criticized for being outclassed by other racing peers at the time most notably Need for Speed 2 and Rage Racer. But the question is, is the game good or is it a disgrace to the legacy of Porsche? I feel like I said earlier in this video, but fuck it, I'm gonna say it again. Let's take a look, shall we? Porsche Challenge's gameplay is pretty straightforward. You have the championship mode, which is simple, practice mode is basically single race mode, and time trial, which is self-explanatory. The championship consists of racing around 12 events and have to place first place or else you will fail and you need to try again. However, much like the original Wipeout, you have limited continues so you need to make sure you drive well in this game. The game offers two driving styles, arcade mode and simulation mode with arcade mode being more suited for casual players who want to have a plug-and-play experience, whereas the simulation mode offers players a more of a realistic experience, similar to how you would drive a boxer at the time. So, what makes simulation mode different to arcade mode, you may ask? Well, the handbrake mechanics feel more responsive in the arcade mode than in the simulation mode, as it's kind of delayed but also more realistic, but other than that, there aren't any more comparisons between the two modes as far as I know. The game also offers three difficulty skills, easy, normal, and hard. These difficulty skills not only affect the opponent's AI, but also the extra time you get after reaching checkpoints. Oh, did I mention that this game has a time limit? Because of course it does, and it gets even more brutal on the hard difficulty skill as the amount of extra time you earn for the checkpoints is pretty low and it's actually nigh impossible to complete a 15 lap race on that skill. The best I could go was like 7 to 9 laps at maximum. Porsche Challenge has 4 tracks, USA, Stuttgart, Alpine and Japan. Well at first you might be thinking, wow, only 4 tracks? That's low. But then again, so did Rage Racer, it only had 4 tracks, but that quantity was compensated for its amazing quality at the time. The game didn't disappoint, as the track design is pretty solid for the most part. For example, Stuttgart, which is actually the capital city of German state of Baden-Württemberg and the headquarters of Porsche, also reside in the city, which really makes sense. The track is essentially a racetrack filled with tarmac and grass, which is pretty funny, considering the word Stuttgart is pretty much a word play in Stuttgarten, and it fits the track's theme so greatly. The USA is also pretty fun to drive around, it was actually the track you would race in the demo version of this game. It's pretty vivid in terms of design, you have casinos, lots of houses and even a small train that you need to dodge or else you're fucked. I know that this track takes place in the US, but which part of America? Well, judging by the design of this track, I feel like it takes place in Miami or Florida. Japan is also a very good track as well, taking place at night which makes the game's graphics so outstanding but I'll talk about it later. It has a lot of tunnels and curvy corners, but it's still a fun track to drive. And last but not least, we have the Alpine, which is actually my least favorite track in the game. The track has a lot of tricky corners and snow that can slow you down to a crawl, which isn't the problem. I can take these corners with ease, but it's the last part of the track that will certainly fuck newcomers in this game. You better make sure you position yourself very well because if you don't, you will get fucked and your chances of winning become slim to none. 
The four tracks also have a longer version of themselves, which is pretty neat, but it doesn't end there though. We also have four interaction tracks. What is interaction you might ask? Well, here's the thing. The interaction mode consists of you racing a track, for example Stuttgart, where every lap you drive a different layout of the track, which was very unique at the time when this game was released, and I still wish other games in the racing genre would utilize this unique mode. I mean, imagine Rage Racer had this mode, which would have been the tits. The only downside of this is that this mode is absent in the two-player mode, which kinda sucks. Even in the manual of the game says that this mode is gone in the multiplayer mode, so that you don't have to blame the ever-changing tracks when your friend is beating you. After completing the championship mode, you will unlock the mirror championship mode, which, as the name implies, mirrors all the tracks in the game. And in this championship, you will face the black Porsche, and it's a tough opponent to defeat. After beating this championship, you will unlock the black Porsche, and you can even tune up to your preferences. You can make the car accelerate faster, having higher top speed, more grip, you name it. Speaking of Porsches, since this is a Porsche Boxster game, you can only choose the color of your Boxster, more specifically your character, since each character is tied to the color of that Porsche. We have 6 characters to choose from, or 7 if you complete the championship mode. Then the Kickboxer, Beats the DJ, Takabu the Hacker, Nikita the Journalist, Marco the Mechanic, and Rachel the Model. Each character has their own driving style when you face them. For instance, Dan has his own relaxed driving style, Beats is very aggressive. However, if you play with these characters, apart from the color of their Boxster, they all feel the same, which is a shame as I feel like that each Boxster should have their own attributes to make it more distinct to each other. As far as the controls go, it's pretty straightforward. X is for accelerating, square is for braking, circle is for hand braking, which you will need to master in order to win, and the D-pad is for steering your car. Interestingly though, this game somehow does support the DualShock controller, which is very bizarre. This game was released in April 1997, and the DualShock controller was released on November 1997, almost 7 months after the game's release. It allows the player to have full control over the steering of the Boxster, not to mention that it also allows the use of the right thumbstick to accelerate or brake, which is very good. The game also supports the Neckcon controller, which is a huge plus as well, especially when playing the game on Duck Station, which allows us to accelerate or brake using the left or right triggers. As far as physics goes, it's alright, the handling can be very twitchy, and it takes time to get used to it, but it's not that bad. Oh, you can also see the history of the Boxster, which is pretty neat. The Porsche Boxster is a completely new car, from the first sketch to the last bolt. Its design is modern, but classic, emotional and dynamic, to give it an unmistakable Porsche identity. The mid-engine concept is realized with a six-cylinder boxer to provide lively driving and a maximum of everyday practicality. By 1997, Porsche Challenge graphics were pretty great for the time, especially on the Boxster car model. It looked gorgeous. Primitive? Sure. But you can tell that it's literally a Porsche Boxster. I remind you, this was before Gran Turismo 1 was released. Granted, the only car in this game is the Boxster, but even so, like I said, it was very pleasing to see a car model so well by 1997 standards. The graphics on the tracks are great as well. The game also uses Gorod shading one year before Ridge Racer Type 4 and it looked amazing especially when you drive around Japan. It looked like chef kiss. Not to mention that using Duck Station you can upscale the graphics to a much crispier resolution alongside using the widescreen patches which can make the game even more prettier than ever before. The soundtrack was composed by Jason Page, who made soundtracks for other games like Rapid Racer and Cool Borders 2. The soundtrack itself packs tons of cool music and they are pretty solid to hear, quite befitting for a game like this.
As for the engine sounds, they are fine, by Porsche standards of course. So, is Porsche Challenge any good? Well, it does face some heavy competition from many racing games from that era, Rage Racer, Need for Speed 2 and Wipeout XL. But it's actually a pretty decent game in its own right. The graphics were pretty good by 1997 standards, the boxer car model in the game was pretty faithful to the real life counterpart, the gameplay while a little bit bland compared to the other racing games at the time was still solid for what it was. It was essentially an advertisement for their new car and in that regard both Sony and Porsche succeeded with flying colors, at least in Europe anyway, because the game sold pretty well in the European market and received the platinum brand in 1998. Then in 2000, a game based on Porsche cars named Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed was developed by EA Canada, a development studio responsible for making the previous Need for Speed games like Hot Pursuit and High Stakes. And the game, as a Porsche style that is, was far more superior than Porsche Challenge in every possible way, with more Porsche cars, a more realistic experience and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, this also marked an era where EA had an exclusive deal with Porsche. This meant that all Porsche cars were only exclusive to racing games that were made or published by EA, meaning no other racing games that wasn't published by EA couldn't have Porsche cars. Though some devs like Polyphony Digital had some sore work around to overcome that, that being using rough cars which were modified versions of Porsche cars. This deal went on for 16 years and in 2016 the deal was gone forever, meaning other publishers could use Porsche cars. Thank goodness, as otherwise the racing genre would have been in dire hands if EA still had exclusive rights to Porsche cars. As for Team Soho, after Porsche Challenge, they also made other games in their repertoire like Rapid Racer, Spice World, the first three TIFF games, and last but not least, The Getaway. Why last you may ask? Well, the studio closed down in 2002 and merged with SSC Studio Cam to form Lawton Studio. This studio, while they made other TIFF games, they were well known for making the SingStar series. Now, the creator of Team Soho, Brendan McNamara, founded Team Bondi in 2003 and hired several members from Team Soho. Team Bondi only developed one title only, that being Eleanor, a game published by Rockstar Games and it gathered tons of positive reception both critically and commercially. However, despite the positive reception of the game, the studio had tons of controversy, most notably poor working conditions which made Rockstar Games parting ways with Team Bondi as well as Bondi getting close in 2011. Overall, Porsche Challenge may not be the best racing game out there, but it still made something good regardless and has this interesting charm and fun.